I want to thank you for joining me tonight, February the 9th, Tuesday, 7 p.m. for our Bible study, same time, same channel here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, our YouTube channel. We do not have a, an in-person Bible study tonight, nor do we have one next week, should you be considering coming out. The reason for that, we like to make sure that we have plenty of time in our sanctuary between worship services. We take this COVID-19 very seriously. We like to have 48 hours between worship services. So we cannot have a Bible study on Tuesday night, February the 16th, because the next day we think it's more important that we host Ash Wednesday worship service. So I invite you to come down. Ash Wednesday, of course, is the beginning of the season Lent. So we hope you'll join us 7 o'clock to 7.30. We only have half-hour worship services. There is music in our worship services, but there is no singing. We do require you to wear a mask, but we do invite you to come down. Communion will be a part of that service. Imposition of ashes will take place before the service and after the service. You're welcome to come outside. We will have a tent set up at which place and at which time you can receive the imposition of ashes. Again, 7 o'clock will be the service. Let's start with prayer, and then let's take the opportunity to open up the scripture today. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on us this day as we open up your word, in particular Paul's book to the Corinthians. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a reminder, what was going on in Corinth? The church was divided. Christians hated each other. And I will tell you, the biggest division is a division that exists Today, between the rich and the poor, you had the people on the right side of the tracks, the people born on the wrong side of the tracks, and the rich people resented the poor people, that they were being treated in the same way the rich people wanted to be treated like royalty. In the kingdom of heaven, all of us are treated like royalty, okay, because we're all covered by the gift of Jesus Christ in his holy baptism. But they thought that there was something special about them because they were rich. And so you had a circumstance in Corinth where the rich people would bring for their potluck suppers because they ate dinner together every single night as the church. The rich people would bring their caviar and, and their filet mignon and I, I'm just making this stuff up. You know, whatever expensive fare that they would have for that evening. Now remember, it's a potluck supper. So all this expensive fare was there, and the poor people might bring a loaf of bread, okay? Maybe a little bit of olive oil to dip the bread in. You know, not a whole lot. Maybe a few simple grains or maybe some fruit or whatever it is that they were able to bring. The rich people said, I'm not eating that stuff. I brought all the rich stuff, so I'm going to eat my stuff. They went first in line. Kind of exactly, a non, that's very much a non-Jesus thing, right? Jesus believed that if you wanted to be a leader, you took the back of the line. The leaders always go last. This didn't sit well with Paul. And so Paul was confronting them and their attitudes and telling the church, you need to grow up and understand who this Jesus Christ is. That's why I tell you, if, you, if you're ever tempted, and it's okay, to use 1 Corinthians 13 in your wedding, please understand this. It's not a sappy love poem. It wasn't written for your wedding. It was written to Christians who are about ready to kill each other. Okay? With that in mind, we're going to read today's lesson. And so we begin with chapter 9, verse 16. If I were to proclaim it, the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. Okay, so remember, he's really trying to address the attitude of the rich people who thought they were, you know, as we, as our, as our worship leader used to say, he was all that in a bag of chips, okay? He thought, they thought they were something special. Well, Paul is saying, hey, I'm a proclaimer of the gospel. That makes me so much more important than any of you rich people, but I'm not going to boast about that. Like, you know, he kind of is by not boasting about it. It's kind of an ironic thing. So he's saying, I'm not going to sit here and boast about that. I have every right to boast about it because I'm more important than you because I'm a preacher of the gospel. You're just a rich person. Okay. So he goes on. 
So if I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid upon me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. Well, he's saying, look, I proclaim it not because I expect anything out of it, but because it's an obligation, because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. I need to do this, and I can't keep silent. You know, it's like having the best news in the world that could really free somebody from despair. You say, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time with it. Really? You're going to let somebody suffer because you're too much of a lazy butt to go and help them out? And so Paul is saying, God put this on my heart. It's my job. I don't deserve any special acc you know, accolades because of this. I do it because I have to. I'm supposed to. It goes on, verse 17. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I'm entrusted with a commission. I like this because Paul is trying to remind us that um, he didn't create the gift of the gospel. It was something given to him. And so he can't boast about it. It's not a task that he should get credit for doing because it's a gift. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, it's kind of like, uh, let, me, let me throw this down. It's kind of like this. Because this is what he's talking about, right? Money. Rich people think they earn the money that they have. Well, we all do. It's my money. It's my possession. I'll use it the way I want to because I earned it. All of this pre-existed your birth. When you die, this does not come with you. Ergo, it's not yours. It's not your property. Whose property is the money that you have in your household? Oh, let me see. It belongs to God. It was God's before you're born. It was God's when you were born. It was God's when you earned it. it was God, it'll be God's back to God when you die. So you were given this money. You were given this money, pardon me. What? You were given it because God blessed you with it so that you could use it to, to be a blessing. You're a steward. Oop, can you read up sideways there? You're a steward. This isn't your money. You're a steward of it. Paul is saying the same thing about the gospel, trying to illustrate that. I'm a steward of something that doesn't belong to me, and so I have to give it away. The same thing is true with money. He's trying to get them to put their thinking caps on. If the gospel, the richest thing in the world, is not mine to give, or uh, is not mine to give, and I don't deserve credit for giving it away, why should you? when it comes to this money thing, okay? You've got to be a good steward because it's God's money. You know, it's like, it's like uh, you know, a rich person maybe uh, gives away a million dollars. Well, you know, they might have $500 million in the bank. Everybody's like, ooh, look how generous that millionaire is. He gave a million dollars. It's not his. Can you imagine, you know, somebody gives me $500 and I say, oh, I'm going to give $100 away. Look how generous I am. It's not mine. We don't take credit for giving away something that doesn't belong to us. <sighs> okay. A little rant over. Let's keep going. But this is exactly what Paul is trying to get him to think of. If I shouldn't get credit for giving away the gospel because it's not mine, you shouldn't get credit with your money, and you should rethink this because ultimately it all belongs to God. All right, what then is my reward if I proclaim the gospel, he's saying? Verse 18, just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel, oh, okay, free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. I have every right because I'm giving you something good, to ask you for money. But I never do that, Paul says. This is where that 
uh, phrase tent making ministry comes from. Paul made tents to make a living so that he would never have to charge anybody to preach the gospel. I do a lot of tent making ministry here. I do receive some income from the church and I'm very grateful for it. It does help me to stay here and focus on it to some extent. But a great bulk of my income comes from being a track and field coach. I was an athletic director for a time. It's one of the reasons why I'm going back to school to finish my degree so I can also do some adjunct work as a professor. But the point is, is that Paul doesn't want to put a burden on people. He's really, <laughs> he is really digging it into these rich folks. Okay, he's really digging into them. He said, I don't charge you for preaching the gospel. Why are you acting this way? Okay, verse 19, for though I'm free with respect to all, I've made my, myself a slave to all. See, he gets this Jesus thing. Jesus says, the first shall be last, the last shall be served. If you want to be a leader, you need to be servant of all. That was Jesus. That was Jesus' uh, example for us. That's what Jesus did for us. To the Jews I become as a Jew, so that I might win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. We talked about that one last week. How Paul was talking about, you know, if people are, people's, you know, be, be conscientious of the journey and the walk of other Christians. Don't try to enforce your knowledge upon other people. There are baby Christians. Don't say, well, don't be stupid. Don't be such a baby. They're on a journey. Let them grow in their relationship with God. Don't be a burden to them. You know, you need to support them in their journey. To those outside of the law, I became as one outside of the law, though I'm not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law. Christ's law is one law, love one another. Okay, so that I might again win those who are outside of the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that I might by all means save some. I do this all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessing. This is what the gospel means. It is the good news. But gospel means blessing. It is a blessing of God. Okay? And so we're supposed to share it, not make a profit on it not trying to impose our position and title and power over other people. This is where the conflict was going on in the church in Corinth. This is where conflict happens in the church today. Even today, we've got rich people who somehow think that they deserve more. So the rich deserve to be honored and respected because they're rich? No. They've been given a gift of God. It belongs to God. Share it. You've been given the gospel. Share it. The whole purpose is to give away what God has given us. What happens, though, if we give it away? Oh, God fills it up again. And we give it away. And God fills it up again. We don't truly have faith in God if we don't give away what God has given to us. So we've been given the good news. Give it away. We've been given wealth. Give it away. You can't take it with you once you die. And so God has called us to be a blessing. Why? So that the world might be blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, these are tough lessons because the truth is, I'm willing to bet you that most people listening to this Bible study think of themselves as, eh, I'm not very rich. But you know, the truth is that probably almost everybody who's listening to this lesson today, compared to the rest of the world, is really wealthy. Help us to be generous and magnanimous with what you have given us. Most importantly, with that good news, the gospel. Help us to share it so that we might bless the world with the good news of Jesus. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. We only have one more Tuesday Bible study in the season after the Epiphany. So I look forward to seeing you next week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord 
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lift his countenance upon you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen.